Okay, AP Computer Science A. This is uh, sort of like a little bit of review for our test, just some of the basics that we've been covering. So we've been doing class composition. So um, for instance, let's, let's create a pet store that has pet objects in it. That's classic class composition. So we could start with our pet class and kind of go through some of the basics, which uh, even if you don't have to do these things on the test, you just should be really good at understanding all these things. So we're gonna have private instance variables. So for our pets, they're gonna have um, a string that is the type of animal, you know, cat, dog, hyena, whatever. And then we'll have another one that's private double cost. So, of course, you gotta make sure they're private. Uh, constructors, uh, public, uh, pet, we might make a zero R constructor. A lot of times on AP for response question, that's, it's not necessary. They don't give you one, they don't ask you to do one. But if, if they did, we could set the animal objects equal to null, strings, objects, usually are null, integers, usually zero end zero arg constructor. <clears throat> um, we could make a multi-argument uh, constructor, public pet, and bring in, and I'll talk about some of the things that we've been doing maybe more recently. Like, uh, so a lot of times I would say uh, string, and a lot of times I'd say like initial animal, but we could actually just say animal potentially confusing, but we have some ways around it. And uh, double, instead of initial cost, we could just say cost. We could use the same name as private instance variable. But what you should do if you do this is say this dot animal. Because if you just say animal, is it this animal or is it this one right here? Is it the animal uh, private instance variable or is it the animal temporary variable from the argument? This dot says, oh, this is for this object. So if you say this dot animal equals animal, it makes it more clear. Okay, and so this dot cost equals cost. So this is just to clarify which, uh, which is which. Okay, now um, we could, you know, create getters and setters. We could say public. So it's got you got to say public. That means it's accessible by a client class, another class. You got to say what kind of thing it returns. So uh, we're going to say it's going to return a string. It's going to be get animal. And usually getters are zero arg. And they're usually pretty simple. Just return animal. Um, you know, we can do it for the cost too, public double we got to say that the return type get cost you know and just in the returns the cost in method get cost in method get animal And to arg constructor. Okay. Um, and we could do setters, uh, mutators. Um, they're public. Uh, they don't return anything, so we get void. We could say uh, set animal. And they would take an argument, a string. Uh, that can be like a new animal, and it would just be uh, animal equals new animal. So this is a way to change the private distance variables. So these are called setters. They're called uh, mutators. In method set animal. You know, we could do one for the cost also. I mean, so I, you're not going to necessarily have to do this, but 
this is stuff that you might have to do or stuff that might be in the code that they give you and it's just really good to totally understand what these things are set cost uh, double uh, new cost <clears throat> cost equals new cost in method set cost um, we could have a two string right I mean I'm just kind of going through a bunch of the basics here public uh, string two string now these are zero arg it's kind of like an accessor but it creates a string and you know if it's not that complicated you could just build it and return it at the same time you say well animal and then we could put like a you know space in between and put the cost or something we could you know we could put like a a dollar sign that'd be cool you know and then the cost you know kind of made it a little more nice don't do system dot out here this is to create a string that would be nice to print and method to string so this is just you know a lot of basics uh, of course we want to close end class pet this is a really basic pet you know we were creating these you know in the previous unit kind of like the student and the student roster and my phone and my songs okay let's create um yeah, so the, this thing right here is saying, okay, this class, this pet, this pet object, that's what that's all about. Okay. Um, now let's create uh, a pet store, which is going to have an array list. I mean, you might have arrays, you might have array lists on this uh, test. Public class pet store. Now, if we're going to have an array list, then we need to import java dot util dot array list now on the on the ap test you don't have to worry about this they'll say assume that all the classes have been imported that need to be imported um um okay so you know a lot of times in the class composition that we have the the sort of the the class that holds the other class will have like an array list or array that holds those objects. So we can say, well, let's make it a, an array. Um, we'll call it stock. You know, what's in, in stock in the store. Now we we just declare it here. We don't initialize it. So then we're going to do uh, constructors. You know, we could make a zero R constructor, and it could be like a stock equals, and we can just initialize it. New array list that holds pet objects and we do the empty parentheses afterwards so end zero arg constructor we have to call that a default constructor okay um, let's do another one public pet store so these are constructors now this time I'm going to expect an array list of pet objects and we could call it stock also the same name we we're just talking about that and then here we'd say this dot stock so that we knew know that the stock that we're talking about right here is the stock private instance variable equals the stock that we just got as an argument Um, okay, so let's let's think of some like methods that we could do. We could say uh, remove animal, uh, public, and uh, let's say it's going to return either. I mean, some interesting things you could do is you could you know put the removed animals in an array that and it gets returned. We could remove we could return how many of those animals got removed, um, or it could be void. You know, I could just remove them and not return anything. So remove animal, 
um, string animal to be removed. So what this is going to do is going to remove all the dogs or all the cats or whatever. Now, if I want to remove how many, if I want to return how many, I need to create a variable for that, like a, we could call it count or removed or whatever. Let me set it to zero. And then we're going to do like a for loop. Now, I don't think we do a for each loop because we're actually removing them, right? So we need to do a regular for loop. Uh, int index equals zero. We should be really good with for loops for each loops. Uh, index is less than uh, stock dot size because it's an array list. It'd be dot length if it was an array. Uh, index plus plus. So we could say, well, if the current anim the current animal, current pet, so we could say stock dot get index um, and then we need to get its name. So we we are get let's see. Do we have a oh no, we call it animal. Get animal. So we had a getter there, and this is why we need it. Get animal dot equals not equal equals dot equals uh, animal to be removed right so this is saying all right get the current pet get the animal type it is dot equals the animal to be removed if if that's true then we want to do stock dot remove index and then increment our count because we just removed one count plus plus don't return it yet because we got to finish going through the whole thing so we end our if and it keeps going we end our for um, and then after we've done it all then we return the count if you return the count right away you're, you're not going to end up going through the whole thing so this would be end method remove animal okay i don't know okay how about uh get average price or we could even look for the highest price or things like that I and mean, these are all different things we've done a lot of them but you know, let's just do average public it's going to return a double average price should probably be a double get average price doesn't take an argument just says hey i want the average price of all the pets in your pet store so we probably need to create a variable double uh, for the total price initialize it 0.0, .0 .0 usually for doubles do a for loop right and this is kind of the same stuff. Oh, you know what? We could probably do a for each loop here because we're not going to actually, we don't want to change anything. So let's just do that for fun. For now, what are the types of objects in this array? They are pet objects. And we could give a little P for pet and then colon and then the name of the array list or array. This is works the same for arrays and array list. So you got to put the, the type of object that's in it, give it a temporary variable name, and then the name of the array list or array. And then we could say, okay, so it copies them in here. So we, then we could say total plus equals. Now the pet, that's a pet object. We need to get its price. So I think we have a dot get price, get cost, right? I think it was get cost in our other one. And so that should work totally fine. And so that adds them all up. And then at the end, we want to return the total divided by the number of pets and we don't want to hard cut it so we're going to do stock dot size and this is an int but if this is a double it's going to give you a double and so that would be end method get average price all right end class 
pet store. Anyway, some other things to think about when you're studying for your test are string uh, methods, index of, uh, dot equals, uh, substring. You know, we've been doing a lot of string stuff lately. Um, you know, and just, you know, just kind of the logic of looking for certain things that are true in an array, an array list, and objects. And anyways, that's it.